I want to talk to you about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're talking about the names of the Holy Spirit. You know, we talk about the names of the Son of God. We talk about the Jehovah names of God the Father. But there are at least 87 names or titles of the Holy Spirit. And so Wednesday night, I talked to you about one of the names. He is the helper. He is the one that helps us. But tonight, I want to talk to you about one of the names of the Holy Spirit is, in fact, next, uh, or this upcoming Wednesday night, one of the names of the Holy Spirit is the anointing. Now, we talk about the anointing as if it's an abstract thing, but the anointing is the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is the anointing. So, Wednesday night, we'll talk about the anointing, and, uh, but tonight, I want to talk to you as you stand with me and go to Acts chapter 2 again. This is Pentecost Sunday, so we've got to stay in Acts 2, right? Acts chapter 2, verses 14 through 17. And uh, what I'm talking about tonight is rain. Some of the names of the Holy Spirit when it is tied to rain. And I mean showers. I'm talking about rain, R-A-I-N. And let's read Acts chapter 2, verse 14. If you're there, would you say amen? See if your neighbor's got it. If not, help them find it. But And it's up here behind me. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunk, drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God. Read those next four words. I will pour out. St say it again. I will pour out. One more time. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Father, just do it again. Just do it again. Pour out your spirit to, like you did then. Do it again, and we'll praise you for Pentecost Sunday and beyond. And everybody said amen. And amen. As you're being seated, tell somebody you're glad to see them tonight. You may be seated. Now, when it comes to the anointing and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and those names, they are very similar, but they're very different. When we talk about the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it really refers to an individual, being upon an individual. But when you talk about the name of the Holy Spirit, the outpouring, you're talking about more than one. You're talking about on a group. In other words, the anointing is for one person, but the outpouring is for many persons. The anointing is within. The outpouring is upon. The anointing is you, talking about you individually, but the outpouring is us. The anointing is the servant, but the outpouring has to deal with the church of servants. The anointing is on each, but the outpouring is upon all. And I pray that God would pour out his spirit upon us in these last days. We need to make a difference in this world. If never before we have yearned and prayed and asked for the Holy Spirit by name, and that is the outpouring of the spirit, would you move in our midst and pour out your glory among us, and we will see a difference, and the gates of hell shall not prevail when there is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen tonight? Think about the upper room when you read the story. 120 were gathered. Yes, there was a group of them. And the spirit of which we read tonight was a fulfillment where God said, I will pour out of my spirit. There was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. And it went from Jerusalem and Judea and to Samaria unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Something happens when the Holy Spirit is poured out upon his people. Amen. Think about Azusa Street. I'm uh, reading a book right now on uh, uh, William Seymour, the African-American pastor of Azusa Street. Uh, he went to Los Angeles to pastor a church. Uh, he began to preach Pentecost, and they kicked him out, and they locked the door. 
And so a group of people went to another location. And guess what God did? He poured out his spirit. Uh, and then the multitudes came in. Uh, and because of that outpouring in 1906 uh, called Azusa Street, uh, we have the modern Pentecostal movement. It revived the gifts of the spirit. Uh, it revived the work of God in the midst of the years. Uh, and I thank God for 1906 and Azusa Street. Uh, and if you don't know anything about it, uh, read it and it'll bless your heart how God moved in those meetings. Amen. And then I think about the Octagon Tabernacle in 1911 when the Fire Baptized Holiness Church and the North Carolina Pentecostal Holiness Church merged on January 31st, 1911. 1911, when the motion was made and passed, all of a sudden the Spirit broke out and they began to sing, Blessed be the tie that binds. And from that little octagon, eight sided room that we can go visit in Falcon any time of the day or night, out of that room has come forth a movement that has over 5,000 churches, 2.5 million members throughout the world. Brother and sister, you need to get excited when God pours out His Spirit. Thank Things begin to happen. Uh, somebody give him praise here tonight. In the Falcon Camp meeting, uh, started in 1900, 1900, as a missionary and a lot, wasn't even Pentecostal holiness. There wasn't a Pentecostal holiness back then, per se, as we know it. Started, a, a, a Colbreth started that meeting as a, as a man of layman, a man of God, a Methodist who had got uh, on fire for God. Uh, and they started that camp meeting uh, as a missionary and alliance camp meeting. Uh, and God began to move at that camp meeting and thousands came and Bishop J.H. King headed there to preach one time and he got off the train in Godwin. Godwin is about as far, I would say, as, uh, well, let's just say where Cracker Barrel is. I use that as a point of reference a lot, I know. Uh, Cracker Barrel to Sims. That's about the distance there. Anybody ever heard of Sims? I know you've heard of uh, Cracker Barrel. I just don't know. But if you think of downtown Sims and we're Cracker Barrel, I-95, uh, uh, that's about the distance between Godwin and Falcon. Uh, and, and Bishop King got off the train uh, and he heard a sound. Uh, and what was it? He heard the people praying uh, at the Falcon camp meeting. Can you imagine people praying at Cracker Barrel uh, and people in Sims hearing it? It, uh, it happens when the Spirit uh, is poured out. Uh, oh, God, pour out your Spirit upon us, God. Uh, oh, thank you for the individual touch. Uh, but, oh, God, pour out your Spirit upon our nation, uh, upon our denomination, uh, upon our church, uh, and upon our lives. Uh, oh, God, we believe uh, one of the names of the Holy Spirit is the outpouring of God. Uh, and let it happen. Uh, does anybody want to happen tonight? Uh, thank God for camp meeting. Uh, thank God for Falcon. Thank God for Los Angeles. But I believe on Tillman Road, God can pour out his spirit again. Amen. And he's doing it. Amen. Now, think about the rain names of God. Let's look at number one. One of the names of the Holy Spirit tied to the outpouring is floods upon dry ground. Say that with me. Floods upon dry ground. Now go to Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 1. I'm, a, I, I'm, a, I'm about to have a spell here tonight. Floods on dry ground. Isaiah 44, 1 through 4. Yet, if you're there, say amen. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel whom I've chosen. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jerusalem, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. Now read the next few words. And floods upon the dry ground. That's a name of the Holy Spirit. Floods upon dry ground. That is a description of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. One of the names of the Holy Spirit. Dr. Elmer Towns has it in his book. Floods upon dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. Woo! and thy blessing upon thine offspring, and they shall spring up as among the grass, which as willows by the water 
courses. Uh, oh, the Holy Spirit is named water. And we know that John chapter 7, verse 37 says, Out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. One of the names of the Spirit is water. Somebody say water. Oh, living waters. I want you to know that the Lord wants to pour out water upon this place. But listen, he didn't say he was going to pour water out upon the place. What did he say, church? Carefully. He's going to pour what? Living waters, but he was going to pour floods. Now, how many of you know when you talk about floods, we're not talking about just water. We're not even talking about just living water. He said, I was going to pour floods. That, my brother and sister, is a lot of water. Amen? That's a saturation. Praise God. You know, this last fall and this past winter, it was a flood all the time, wasn't it? I mean, it was rainy every single day. It, I thought for sure that God had raised up another Noah, and I was trying to find out where the ark was being built because I didn't want to miss it. I had just bought the house we're living at now, and I didn't even see my backyard for weeks upon weeks. And uh, and then when it started to cut the grass, I couldn't get down into the little small little ditch there to really cut the grass. Uh, that was a good excuse not to do it that week uh, because it was uh, too much water. Oh, my friend, please understand that God doesn't want to give you just, a, you know, people talking about I got sprinkled uh, or I got, uh, you know, just a little bit of water and talking about water baptism. Uh, you know, we believe and full what? Immersion. Amen? That's because that's exactly the way God wants to do. He wants to fully immerse. He wants to pour floods on dry grounds. Oh, I want to tell you, God, uh, listen, uh, we have a lot of classes. We have a lot of methods. We have a lot of ideas. But we really need a lot of the Holy Ghost. We need a lot. We need more than just a drop here and there. We need floods on the dry ground. Would you give him praise here tonight? Oh, thank God for talent, organization, structure. But we need the flood of God's Spirit. Now think about a flood for a moment. A flood. What happens when a flood comes? A flood overruns its, what, boundaries. Oh, I'll tell you, when God pours out His Spirit, we can't stay in our seat. We can't keep it to ourselves. We are like those drunken, seemingly drunken members of that first Pentecostal outpouring where it looked like they were drunk with wine, but it was not the wine of this world. It was the new wine of the Holy Spirit. And brother, they started in an upper room, but they couldn't stay in that upper room because floods you cannot contain. Some of you have to have flood insurance because just as sure as a hurricane comes up, that water is going to find its way to your back door. And that's not a good thing. But in the Spirit, it is a good thing. I want Him to flood the choir. I want Him to flood the deacon board. I want Him to flood the church service. Uh, you know what happened this morning? Uh, we had some flooding in this service this morning. Uh, we had an order of service, uh, but God just flooded it, uh, and he just, well, glory, he just blessed, uh, and I say, Lord, pour out your spirit uh, upon the dry ground. I don't know about you, uh, but, uh, oh, listen, uh, there are no boundaries. Somebody say, no boundaries, uh, you say, my child can't ever get saved. He's too far gone. Uh, but those floods can overcome the boundaries of drug addiction. You say, my situation will never say, uh, never be the same. Uh, have you seen what a flood will do to an area? Have you seen Bill's Barbecue where all you can see is the sign up there? I'll tell you, floods can change situations, uh, change your outlook. Uh, you say, my church is too dry. I'm not talking about Westmoreland. Some people listening on live stream. Uh, my church is too dry. Well, listen, just pray. Pray to the Holy Spirit uh, and ask for that floods upon dry ground. Uh, you say our circumstances are too difficult. Uh, I said like the prophet, is anything too hard for the Lord? Uh, I'll tell you there are no boundaries uh, to God's power. No boundaries to God's grace. Uh, there's no cancer uh, that can stop the floodwaters uh, of God's healing. Uh, oh, somebody give him praise here tonight. Lord, flood this place. Amen. Some people have a dried up situation. 
I mean, their, their ministry has dried up. Their song has dried up. They are barren and dead and dry. But what is needed is floods upon the dry, somebody say the dry ground. And I know it's, it's not easy when you're dealing with dry ground. You know, when it's a hard, hard ground and, and it's dusty and you try to plow and, and it's, it's just hard to, to dig into the dirt. It's hard and, and, and people's hearts are hard and, and, and situations we face are hard. But you let a flood come and it'll change everything. Amen. You let a flood come, and it'll change that dry situation. It'll change that dead situation. It will change that dry. To, there is no impossibility when the floods of the Holy Spirit pour out upon his church. And I wish somebody would say, yes, Lord. Amen. Not only do we see floods upon dry ground, but notice there's another rain name of the Holy Spirit. Water, somebody say water is the name of the Holy Spirit. Say water. Somebody say floods. Somebody say floods on dry ground. All of these are names of the Holy Spirit. But there's also showers, point to, upon the mown grass. Look at Psalm 72 in verse 6. He, talking about the Holy Spirit, shall come down like rain upon the mown grass and sh as showers that water the earth. This is indicating the work and ministry of the Holy Spirit and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And you know what this implies? Uh, let, let me tell you something. It says showers up. Oh, there'll be showers of blessing. Uh, aren't you glad? You can't get a flood without a shower. Amen. Uh, oh, thank God for a good refreshing shower that washes all the piling away. Uh, that that loosens up the hard earth. Uh, thank God for that pleasant rain. Uh, oh, and I love it when the rain of the Spirit comes uh, and there's showers. Uh, oh, thank God for that. But notice it's showers upon the mown grass. Did y'all catch that? Now, I tell you what, I never have liked cutting grass. If you want me to be depressed, tell me I got to cut the grass until I signed the documents to buy my own house. And the minute I signed the documents to buy my own house, I'm not just cutting the grass on a riding lawnmower. I could even ever think about a push lawnmower. But I've lost about 90 pounds, praise God. And I got me a push lawnmower. And buddy, my earbuds on. And I'm just blowing back and forth. And every row is a blessing. And every now and then I'll stop and look at that house. And I'll say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I start cutting around that swimming pool. And I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, let me tell you, I love cutting the grass. Now, you never thought Ricky Nelms would say that but I love that for, oh when I get finished cutting the grass then I'm like oh I can't wait to weed eat and then I blow the debris it's like blowing the devil off my property amen I'm telling you it's wonderful and then when it's all done I step back and I feel like God on day se day six of creation it was very good amen it's beautiful to have nice lawn and your own house and I didn't used to like cutting the grass well let me tell you something about cutting the grass you know the grass grows and you just push that lawnmower over it, and boom, that grass is cut down. Amen. What are you trying to say, Pastor? Y'all missing a good point here to shout. Because sometimes you feel like you've been mowed over, don't you? <laughs> Come on now. You've been pushed over by a lawnmower, and you were standing there and growing in the sunlight, and all of a sudden, whoosh, it, just, it just cuts you down, did not it? And sometimes life will do that to you. The doctor's report will just cut you down. Somebody leaves you will just cut you down. But I'm here to tell you, he is showers among the mown grass. And if you're laying there all cut to pieces, don't give up. Because the rain is coming. And every time, Brother Ray, every time when I was renting a house, they would cut the grass every two weeks. And it aggravated the life out of me because if they they would cut it on Thursday and if they'd cut it at two o'clock Thursday five o'clock Thursday a shower would come up and you know what that means the grass would be grown again in about three days are y'all with me 
I got, said I had to wait another week and a half. And Darnell was like, well, you can cut the grass and go back to my previous statement. I hated to cut the grass. <laughs> when I was renting, I didn't care. Oh, I did, but I didn't. And uh, But I would be embarrassed. And one time I asked Brother Ray, I said, Brother Ray, come down there and cut that grass. I'm going to be gone. I don't want people to see my, that tall grass. But y'all y'all got to bear with my little folly tonight, like Paul said. Just understand uh, that the grass has been cut, and that little rain comes, and before you know it, boom, it grows right back up. And you may have feel cutting down. You may feel like you've been cut in your finances, cut in your dreams, cut in your relationship, cut in your whatever. But I'll tell you, the Holy Spirit is showers upon the cut grass. You will grow again. You will preach again. You will be blessed and highly favored of God because he is the showers upon the mown grass. Somebody give him praise in this house tonight. Amen. 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 I heard about the bamboo tree. It says when the Chinese plant the seed, they water it and cultivate it. And they pull the weeds out, and the first year, nothing happens. I mean, a whole year. And they come back and do the sa to the same spot, and they cultivate it and pull the weeds off and steal nothing. They come back the third year, cultivate it, pull the weeds off where they planted the bamboo seed, and nothing. Three years. They come back the fourth year, cultivate it, pull the weeds off, and nothing. But in the fifth year, they come back and they cultivate it and pull the weeds off and nothing. But sometime during the fifth year, the ground begins to break just a little. And in 60 days, it shoots up 90 feet in the fifth year. And I know that ground is dry. And I know that child doesn't seem like they'll ever be saved. And I know that prayer doesn't seem like it's, a, but you keep cultivating and you keep pulling the weeds off of the promise of God and let the Rabashata, let the rain just keep coming down. And before you know it, in that fifth year or whenever that year is, there'll be what we saw and heard on the day of Pentecost. There will be an and suddenly and boom, that promise is coming out because the Holy Spirit can do amazing things. He is the showers upon mown grass. Can you say amen here tonight? And then finally tonight, another rain name of the Holy Spirit is the early and the latter rain. Somebody say word together. Very important. We, we just say, well, praise God for the early rain. Or praise God for the latter rain. But you're really missing it. Brother Ray, it's the early and the latter rain together. Hosea 6 and 3, then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning. He shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain unto the earth. Joel chapter 2 verse 23. Be glad then ye children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God for he hath given the former rain moderately and he will cause to come down for you. This is all talking about the Holy Spirit. Uh, and the former rain and the latter rain when? In the first month. Uh, and the floors shall be full of wheat uh, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. Uh, and I will restore unto you the years uh, that the locust uh, hath eaten the canker worm and caterpillar and the pot a worm, my great army, which I sent among you. So in the Jewish cycle, there would be the early rains of spring that would begin to bring the, the uh, harvest. And then you would have the first fruits. Pentecost is really the first fruits. Then you would have the latter rain in the fall that would finish the harvest and you would bring in the sheaves. And so you had a time period from the early rain to the latter rain. From the time you planted to the time that you reaped. And there is seed time and harvest. And I believe that there are times in certain situations when we do like the bamboo tree. When we may have to wait that five years. But my friend, I want to tell you God has a way to accelerate. Somebody say the word accelerate. God has a way to do a suddenly. God has a way to give you the early and the latter rain together. So that you can experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit. People talk about... 
Well, have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Uh, well, I'm waiting on it. You're not waiting on it, sister and brother. He's waiting on you. Amen. Well, I've asked the Lord and I hadn't gotten it. Uh, well, you keep asking him because he will give the early and the latter rain together. And God will fill you uh, to overflowing uh, with his spirit. Uh, and God will restore. Somebody say restoration. Uh, I believe he's in the restoration business. Amen. I said God's in the restoration business. And how does he do it? He does it by giving us the early rain and the latter rain together. Zechariah chapter 10 and verse 1 says, Ask ye of the Lord rain when? In the time of the latter rain, so shall, uh, so shall the Lord make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. Zechariah said, listen, and don't you know, some of you have your favorite uh, weather forecasters. You know, you remember Bob DeBarla Layton. Don't y'all remember him from way back there? And Greg Fischel, he was one of our favorite. And, and who, whatever happened to him, we'll never know. Uh, and, uh, and, and now when I watch the news, uh, I don't watch the news. Uh, I just fast forward right straight to Wes Hoffman, I guess is his name, on Channel 17. I love Wes. He's just a just classy guy and just gives it with a nice little funny personality, a lot like Greg Fischel. Uh, and, uh, but I like you have your favorite weatherman, uh, and they tell you what's going to happen. Uh, but Zachariah is your weatherman man and he's now he now he needs to be your favorite weather man because he is predicting uh, that if you'll ask amen if you'll ask uh, it is time for folks somebody say it's time it is past time this world has gone crazy we've got people and that don't know their gender identity we got bruce jenner now called caitlin jenner we've got Bathroom issues where people don't want to, uh, of the, and sports and all of that. And we're not here to make fun of those people. We're not here to discriminate against those people. If they have a flat tire, I'm going to change their tire if, if I can, as much as I can. Uh, if they, they need, they're in the hospital and they need help, I will help them because they have souls. Can you say amen? Uh, but I'm telling you, uh, gender identity and not knowing who you are is confusion. Uh, and who brings confusion? Who is the author of confusion? Uh, the devil. He don't want you to be a man if you're a man. He don't want you to be a woman if you're a woman. He wants you to be confused. He wants you to be uh, 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 not sure of life. And, and then he wants to deceive you and say, well, you must be this and, and that. Uh, all of that. I'm not here to, uh, not at all that we make fun or make light of that. These are people that are truly confused. And these are difficult. It is time, folks. It is time. We need, we need a Pentecost in this generation. The church got in the lights and they got into skinny jeans and they got into uh, uh, all kinds of things. They got into everything but the rain. Amen. You know what will help people is the rain. And nothing wrong with lights. Nothing wrong. Well, there is something wrong with skinny jeans. Amen. If you're not skinny. You say, Pastor, anything wrong with skinny jeans? Yeah, if you're if you're big, they're not good. They're made for skinny people. Amen. <laughs> How I got on that, I'll never know. <laughs> I just will tell you this: it's time. It's past time. And I know that the presidential election didn't go the way some of you wanted, myself included. And I know January six. But listen, let me tell you something. Our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is sovereign. And he's praying for rain. And we can pray for rain. Zechariah said, ask of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. Oh, God, just pour out your spirit. You know what rain does? Rain cleanses too, doesn't it? I mentioned it a while ago. If your car's got pollen on it, oh, the rain will just wash it all off. Uh, particularly good hard rain. Oh, my friend, let us ask for the rain. Let us say, Holy Spirit, pour out among our young people. Pour out among our church. Pour out among our communities. Look at James chapter 5, verse 7. I'm coming to a close. Uh, Brother uh, Quentin, if you'll get ready to come. James chapter 5, verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it until he receive the early and the latter rain. Would you stand with me tonight? Brother Quentin, if you'll come. Be patient. Be faithful. You know, one of the things that will bring a revival is faithfulness. Amen. 
come to church when it's dry. It shouldn't be dry, but to come anyway and help God bring the rain. Amen? Have you got some hard ground that you're dealing with? Have you got some promises that have been planted and have yet to spring like the bamboo tree? Whatever your situation tonight, call on the name of the Holy Spirit. Just say, Holy Spirit, pour out. Pour out. Can we do it now? Lift your hands and pray that. Father, just pour out upon, upon us tonight. God, give us floods tonight. Floods of revival. Floods of your anointing. Floods of breakthrough. Uh, floods of souls being saved. Uh, God, you did it at Azusa Street. Uh, you did it in the upper room. Uh, you did it at Falcon Camp Meeting, at the Octagon Tabernacle. But Lord, would you just open up the floodgates of heaven and let it rain. Uh, and let it rain. Uh, and let it rain. Uh, oh God, it is past time. You said, ask of the Lord rain uh, in the time of the latter rain. You're predicting uh, your your Holy Ghost weathermen are saying it's coming. A front is coming. But we've got to ask and we shall receive and let it happen in Jesus' name. Now this is Pentecost Sunday and I want us to close tonight at the altar asking God for another Pentecost. Can you just step out of your seat and join us? I know we're still under COVID restrictions to us a little bit. So just space out a little bit if you can. But join me at the altar and pray for the rain. That's all I want you to do. Pray for an outpouring. Pray for a flood. Have you got lost loved ones? Pray that God would pour out upon them conviction and let those seeds sown. Let them begin to shoot up. Let answers to prayer. God is in the, he said, I will restore to you the years uh, that the canker worm hath eaten. Uh, oh, God, is re somebody needs restoration tonight. Now, as we come to the altar, lift your hands up to God uh, and begin to pray for another Pentecost, Father. Oh, God, I pray for another Pentecost. Uh, I pray, God, for full restoration, full restoration, of strength, of ability, singing, uh, uh, God, uh, as his days uh, so his strength shall be healing. Lord, not just a little bit, but floods of anointing and healing in his life. Oh, God, just feel this place. Oh, God, just pour floods. Oh, God, we believe, Lord, in Pentecost at any cost. Oh, God, we've got to have floods on the dry ground. Oh, God, flood this place with your presence. Overflow, God, at Westmoreland. Let Pentecost be real. Thank you, Lord, for yesterday. But we need a rainstorm tonight. We feel cut down and mown over like the grass. But God, you will cause us to grow again. You will cause us to sprout again. You are the outpouring. Holy Spirit, you are the floods upon dry ground. Holy Spirit, you are the rain of God. Holy Spirit, you said ask and we shall receive tonight. Oh, pray tonight. Call out for a mighty. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, that husband that won't get saved, uh, that child that won't come to church, uh, oh God, that sickness that won't heal, uh, God, I'm believing you to go out of the boundaries, God. Uh, but Lord, just flood us uh, with your answers to prayer. Flood us uh, with your power. Flood us with your glory. And God will give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Uh, and amen. And amen. Uh, well, is he doing it at Westmoreland? Do you feel them flood waters rising? Amen. Brother Quentin, as we leave tonight, I want you to sing that song you sung just a few minutes ago. Uh, that he is here. What, whatever that song was, that last one you did. Remember? You don't remember? it? Well, just sing something then. Amen. All right. Open the floodgate. Amen. Of heaven. Come on, make that your prayer. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you Wednesday night. Let God bless you. It Let it rain, Lord. Let it rain. Oh, God, do it, Lord. Let it rain. Open the floor.
God bless you. We'll tell three people you're blessed and highly favored. Thank you, Lord, for your outpouring tonight.